Hey everybody, welcome to the Wisco Boater Channel. My name is Chad and today uh, Brittany and I are going to work on getting that trampoline set on top of the hulls. I hope that we're not going to video disaster here, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. First, I need to move the hulls uh, farther apart. Uh, the posts are, are about 80 inches apart. So I'm going to start by doing that and then uh, Brittany's going to come out and help me move the trampoline and at least set it uh, in place fairly close to where they need to be. It's cold, got the garage door open. Um, I think it's only about 18 degrees out right now. So that's freezing, but uh, the trampoline has to go out in the driveway, lay it down and then bring it back in. So oh, this is being chilly. Get some gloves on here. And yes, I am wearing very festive Christmas type pants as it is the Christmas holiday break. And I didn't feel like putting on jeans, so. Enjoy the uh, fun pants. Okay, so that part went okay. Got uh, spaced a little less than 80 inches apart, and that's because the hulls are gonna tip outward just a little bit, which means the posts are gonna move farther apart once they tip. So um, I'm gonna get the trampoline out into the driveway, and then hopefully we can just set it on top, get things adjusted without knocking stuff over. Here we go with the trampoline move. Wish us luck. Now, just come over here and just push up on the trampoline. Okay. Lift just this side. Or just lift here. Here. Yep. Okay, right there. Alright, yep, I can do the rest. Okay. Yeah, I just gotta adjust the, I just gotta, on both the holes, just adjust the tilt inward and the, the trampoline will slide right down. Okay. So, alright. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, babe. Welcome. So the trampoline is now sitting on the post. It's not sitting on the post correctly. The uh, angles aren't quite quite right, but on both sides. But all I need to do now is tilt the hulls inward, the bottom inward, and uh, they'll slide right down on the on the post. But they're in the correct positions on all four corners and ready to drop down. So I think I may go ahead and try to do that just so that it's stable and movable before I go inside and watch some football. Everything is moved. Um, I've got the hulls tucked over basically as close as I can to this side. I might be able to come a little bit closer, but I do need to be able to walk through there. So, um, but everything is sitting in place and sturdy. And uh, now my only concern is, do we have enough space to get Brady's vehicle in here? <laughs> so. I'm gonna do that next, but uh, this is all I'm gonna do for today. It's really, really cold out, and I don't feel like warming the garage up. 
Um, there's a football, there's a bunch of football on today, so time to go in and uh, make a drink and watch some football. But uh, really happy to see this back in place. Um, the rest of this video is going to be getting the trampoline fit down all the way, get the bolts put back in, and then I'm going to clean up the top side of the uh, the trampoline there. I won't be able to test weight on it while it's on these sawhorses. That will have to wait until I get a trailer to put it on. But for now, I can at least work on getting the trampoline cleaned up and uh, remove any additional hardware that's not going to be necessary, like this, uh, whatever that is. Uh, I worked, I tried to drill these out a while ago, but these are steel rivets. So I'm gonna have to have a nice sharp bit and some oil. And then the, uh, this thing, I don't know what it's called either, but this I would like to, to take off. That's gonna involve removing a bunch of rivets and removing this rail. And then uh, I might not even put the rail back on because this is just used for the sail somehow. Since it's, I'm not gonna be sailing, I don't need this and I don't need this. So we'll see what it looks like underneath it after I take it off. But uh, yeah, we'll get this all cleaned up and basically get it ready for uh, putting the motor on. So got the vehicle back in, it's tight. But there's space. Um, I was just walking around the boat. The only casualty from uh, from moving the uh, trampoline back in place is I did scratch the paint a little bit right here, but that's okay. Uh, this has all got to get sanded because I used that cheap roller. So I'm going to sand that, repaint that with the better roller, and I'll touch up that. But uh, everything else survived just fine. Nothing fell off the sawhorses, and uh, I think we're in a good spot. This one's going to be the tight one. You can see it's not, not coming down very far. This side is almost all the way down. This side is the close. This one's the closest. You can actually see the bolt hole. So get that one down first, get this side down first, and then I'll come back over and adjust this side to make that come down a little bit. But Okay, got to work day today um, for a few hours here anyway in the garage. I'm going to work on getting the um, posts back in position so I can put the bolts back in. I will be using my uh, plastic tipped. Oh, it's a snap on. I didn't even know it's a snap on. Anyway, I'll be using my plastic tipped hammer and a block of wood to pound these back down and get the bolts lined up. bolts are in. Uh, all four corners look just like that, so I'm not going to show all of them, but uh, they went really, three of them went really smooth. The fourth one, uh, I ended up just tapping on the, on the casting and pushing down with my hand because it, uh, you know, with three of them in place and one of them kind of kicked up just a little bit, wasn't perfectly lined up. So, um, yeah, just a little, little hammer persuasion and I got all four bolts back in place. So the uh, hull and trampoline are now back together as one piece other than the nuts. I did order new nuts because the, uh, 
nylon ones that originally came with the, uh, the Hobie Cats back in the 70s and early 80s, maybe even in the 90s. I don't know how long they did this, but they used these nylon plastic nuts. And you can see it's split. And um, I don't actually, I haven't done enough research. I don't know if these are split on purpose or if that's uh, broken, uh, cracked. I, I would assume that it's cracked from weather, but I don't know that for sure. But anyway, they don't use these anymore. Um, they use uh, nylock nuts and you don't torque them very, very well, you actually don't torque them at all. You just snug them up against the, the uh, casting and the bolt does all the work. So you don't tighten it because you can risk uh, cracking the, the aluminum castings fairly easily. So I'll just snug those up when they get here. Should be here the next day or so. And uh, we'll be complete. So now I'm gonna go around. I think I'm gonna get this taken off. And then I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start drilling out the, the, uh, the rivets to take this channel off. Because that's the only way to get this off. Well, there is another way. You can take the end caps off the end castings, drill out all these rivets, slide it off that way, and then this would just simply slide out. But because I don't need this channel, um, I, I'm just gonna drill it and take this off as well. So, and I'll go around, make sure there isn't any other unnecessary hardware left on the boat. And then um, after that, I'm gonna start cleaning the trampoline. And even though this has sat outside for a lot of years, it's still in really good shape. I mean, there's no cracks. Um, it's plastic, so, uh, I mean, vinyl, plastic, it'll last forever. Um, even the ropes are, are in good shape. Um, I will weight test it once I get a trailer, but I'm not gonna stand on it up here while it's on the sawhorses. So we'll wait to do that later, but just needs a good cleaning. I'm gonna start with some soapy water and if that doesn't work, then I will try the uh, mold and mildew remover that I have that I used on the hulls. Um, one way or another, I'll get it clean. So I don't think there's any real reason to show this stuff. I'll just show you the end results when I, uh, when I finish up. I do want to share this part with you. I decided I'm not going to completely remove this channel. But what I did do is remove the first three rivets. As you can see there, one, two, and three. Those are no longer in place. And the reason that I decided to not take this channel off, I got to thinking as I was drilling out this first rivet, that if I remove this and leave a bunch of holes in the frame, there could be a potential for some stress cracking to arise, especially with uh, mounting a motor to this center into the you know the center portion of this frame piece so my thought now is and this will work because i've already i've already tried it um, this is flexible enough to where all i gotta move all, all i gotta do is move that here and then slightly pry that up it comes right out so actually a pretty cool little little thing got a bunch of rollers that it, uh, that it rides on that's pretty sweet so anyway that part is off and make sure I don't have any metal chips underneath it and then I'll just put three rivets back in here and uh, make those holes solid again, leave this channel in place. This took just a little bit longer than I anticipated, but no big deal. The uh, trampoline is clean and it looks really good. You can see I obviously can't get it back to the original bright orange color that is represented by the stripe down the middle here where the uh, straps used to be. but. 
nonetheless, it's clean, or clean enough, I should say. So, really happy with that result. Um, I got all the rest of the hardware off, and the only thing I think I have left to do before I wrap up this video is put the nuts in place um, on the trampoline bolts, which should be here, I think, tomorrow or the next day. Oh, I also want to show you the uh, new um, drain plugs. These are super, super cheap, but a necessity. And they are the correct brand. You can see right there, Ron Stan. Good to have those back in place. The other ones were junk. So we're all good there. All right, well, until the uh, nuts for the bolts arrive, I guess I'm done for now. So I got the uh, stainless steel nylock nuts, the uh, thin, you can see them, they're real thin nuts uh, with the nylon insert. Um, I ordered these from Amazon, it's a, it's a bag of 10. Obviously only need four, but this should work just fine. I'm gonna get the nuts put on and we'll wrap this video up. I am going to put these on with some anti-seize. Um, just to make it easier to remove in the future if needed. The bolts that are on there are stainless steel. These are stainless steel. So similar metals shouldn't seize up, but I do want to make sure that uh, there isn't any corrosion issues down the road, although this will be a freshwater only uh, vessel. But uh, I'm gonna use anti-seize anyway. So we'll get the four bolts put, or the uh, four nuts put on, and then I'll tell you what the plan is for the next few weeks um, for videos coming out on the Wisco Boater Channel. Yeah, I think you'll be able to see this all right. Three quarter inch box wrench and three quarter inch socket is what is required. So I'll get the nut started by hand and then just uh, all I'm doing here is Forgot the anti seize. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of anti seize on the threads all the way around. Don't need very much. I will be putting uh, silicone around these nuts as well. I also have to re silicone the base of the posts. So, the anti seize spread around. Okay. Okay, with the anti seize in place, we'll spin the nut on carefully because it is stainless steel. You don't want to have any risk of galling. Because if you gall up a stainless steel bolt and nut, uh, good luck getting it off. You'll have to cut it. Okay, and I'm just going to run this down to the uh, casting. I'm not going to tighten this. Oop. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tighten this beyond contact with the casting. Okay, contact with the casting. It's all you need. These, these castings are aluminum and they will crack very easily if you try to put any sort of torque on them. So there, <laughs> there is absolutely no tor um, tension on the, on the bolt this way. It's all in shear. So the bolt is doing all the work this way, this way, well, in this plane. There's no work being done in tension this way. So all you have to do is tighten that up to the, or run it down to the casting, that's it. It's not gonna move. Sometimes you can actually turn these. This one's just right at snug. So get the other four done 
And then uh, that pretty much be a wrap for this video. All four bolts and nuts are now in place. Everything looks really good. And again, these are just cinched up to the casting. There's no torque put on these. We have a Hobie Cat with trampoline. So thanks for watching this episode of the Wisco Boater channel. I hope you like my, my new uh, Packers hat. This is <laughs> something I wear when, when uh, we're expecting a lot of snow and I'm gonna have to snow blow later today, tonight and tomorrow. We've got a snowstorm coming that's supposed to dump about seven to nine inches on us, which is awesome. I always love the first, uh, first big snow of the year. The Hobie Cat trampoline is back in place. Um, everything's good to go. Coming up on the channel, um, I will, I have a good line on a trailer for the Hobie Cat, which is down um, on the north side of Chicago. So I'll probably make a weekend trip out of that to go visit my friends Adam and Gina and pick up a trailer, bring it back. I'll record that, picking up the trailer, making the modifications. That'll be a whole, whole part of this series because uh, it's just a trailer frame and I'll make the modifications and additions to make the Hobie Cat fit on it. I'm also going to be figuring out where to mount the gas can for the motor that's gonna eventually be mounted on this. So I've got a couple of different ideas, uh, maybe, maybe in the back here on top of one of the hulls or perhaps up front hanging off the bottom of the trampoline with a, with a fuel line that runs to the back. Um, it's only seven feet. So I don't think that'll be too long of a run or perhaps just hanging underneath the trampoline in the back here. Several ideas that I'm gonna research, but that will be coming up. And then after that, um, probably sometime into the spring, we'll work on getting the, the engine mounted. But uh, also coming up on the channel very soon will be my trip to Florida to visit my dad. We're gonna do some kayaking. Uh, you might've seen the, uh, the patch video that I did on my inflatable kayak. I shipped that down to Florida. It's at my dad's place in the Keys. That's uh, coming up in a few weeks and I'm gonna record as much boating activity as I possibly can down there to bring some of that back home. Um, it's been almost 20 years since I've been to the Keys. Uh, last time I went was, uh, would have been spring break co in college, uh, 2001, the year that I graduated college. So almost 20 years since I've been to the Keys, really looking forward to that. I'm also gonna be going up to Sturgeon Bay in the next few weeks to do some maintenance on Clifford. So we're gonna start that winter maintenance series on, uh, on Clifford. Um, I'm gonna do the sump, shower sump removal and cleaning. I've got an underwater LED light that's gonna go in the drain plug. So I gotta wire that up and a few other miscellaneous projects. Maintenance on Clifford is pretty light this year. We did a lot last year. So that's good for my wallet, but not great for video, <laughs> for content for my channel, but we'll make something work. So um, I look forward to seeing you guys next time on the Wisco Boater channel. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, send me some comments. And if you wanna be notified when I post new videos, just like this one, hit that notification bell and you'll be notified when I post. We'll see you next time. Happy boating, everybody.